when we were making the movie, we obviously had absolutely no idea if anybody would like it, you know, let alone that it would still be with us 20 years later. Um, so uh, it was an incredible experience. We had, you know, we came on the heels of a couple of other giant successes, obviously Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, uh, Little Mermaid before that. And these were giant movies that people loved and each one was, was more successful than the last. And so the, our performance anxiety was actually more about that because we felt that we had to compete. Uh, and I think one of the ways that we did it was by doing something very different. And I think that was actually a great blessing that we had on the movie uh, because at the time, believe it or not, people didn't really believe in the movie. Uh, there was a kind of a general sense that the movie was sort of a B movie, right? It wasn't really uh, because it wasn't based on a fairy tale that everyone knew. They didn't know the title. Uh, and so there was actually a famous meeting that we had with Jeffrey Katzenberg uh, where he got up in front of the studio, front, the, all the leadership from the departments of, of both movies because um, Lion King was being made simultaneously with Pocahontas. Uh, and so everybody came to, to this meeting. It was a breakfast meeting on Yom Kippur. I don't know why, but it was. I, I couldn't eat, but everyone else did. Um, anyway, so we were having this meeting, and he got up in front of everybody, and he said, Pocahontas, it's a home run, right? It, it's a West Side Story meets Dances with Wolves, right? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classic in the making. And Lion King, on the other hand, it, it's, it's an experiment. And, and, but we should, we should do these things. It's good for the studio to have these, to take chances, to take risks. And if the movie does 50 million at the box office, we'll be happy. He really said that. And so what happened as a result of that was that nobody wanted to work on Lion King. Everybody wanted to work on Pocahontas because they're like, that's the, that's, the, that's the A movie. That's the, you know, that's the home run. Uh, and so we had to go convince people. We said, please work on our movie, please. And all the, a lot of the, like, the top, top guys at Disney said, you know, I'm really sorry. I'm going to work on Pocahontas. And so what happened was a lot of younger guys got an opportunity that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And a lot of younger guys stepped up into jobs, Tony Bancroft, for example, uh, stepped up into these jobs of responsibility. Uh, but there was that kind of sense around the entire production that we didn't know what it was. We didn't know what the rules were. We didn't know how to make this. And so we, we were allowed to do things that none of these other movies could do. We were allowed to experiment. We were allowed to take chances. And I think a lot of that energy and that spirit is what in, you know, infused the movie. Now, uh, Mr. Katzenberg is the uh, overseer of the new movie. Do you ever say, uh, Jeff, uh, breakfast meeting, 50 million, but <laughs> Pocahontas, eh. No, 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 I, no, no it's, it's, it's a lot of water under the bridge. No, I, I don't need to do that anymore. Never had to it's, say that. Never had to. It, it actually, when we had our, our, our rap, uh, you know, there was actually a party to celebrate Lion King once it came out and it was, being, you know, it was obviously was a huge success even then, um, and and Jeffrey made a big speech about that. And having said that, and he he did uh, he he uh, he got down on his knees actually. 